Welcome to Double Tap here on YouTube. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below. In this clip from our recent episode, we talk about the state of wearables and ask ourselves the question, is the makers or are the makers of assistive technologies innovating more in the wearable space than some of the big names? The latest tech. People love iPhone and it's an important part of our daily lives. Interviews. You see far too many products that come on the market that you look at that you say, was a blind person ever even consulted for something like this? Accessibility. The most interesting thing over the last couple of years is the emphasis on gaming uh, and accessibility. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome to Double Tap TV. I'm Stephen Scott. And I am Mark Aflalo. Thank you guys for being here, Stephen. I got a question for you to kick things off. And that is, how long have you had a electronic device strapped to your wrist? Wow. Um... So we're talking <laughs> Apple Watch, right? I mean, we're not talking anything else. Nothing that keeps me in. Well, no, away hang on, no, 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 no. We're talking. We're talking about wearables. Okay. okay? Right. Wearable technology, because there were things before the Apple Watch. There were things like Fitbit, etc., cetera, yeah, etc. Cetera. So whatever. they call they fall into that category, right? I mean, they were terrible. The Apple Watch works. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I guess I've had the Apple Watch since the very first one. In fact, hilarious story. I uh, it's actually a really funny disability story. I had gone into an Apple store and I kind of marched in at the time, went head over uh, other parts of my body uh, over someone in a wheelchair. Um, so I actually walked through someone with a wheelchair. They ended up on the si on their side. I ended up my cane had disappeared somewhere else. Both of us are laughing hysterically. Uh, it turned out he worked there, and I bought an Apple Watch from him. True story. Um, but yeah, it was really cool. So I got an Apple Watch Series One, um, and I, you know I've never thankfully had that experience again. But I have watched every and bought every other one since. Okay, I I've done the same, and I've done it because really. At the end of the day, it's notifications. Having notifications on your wrist, not pulling out your phone and embarrassing yourself or making it seem rude. It's it's kind of the natural thing. But but wearables, I mean, if you think about the category, you've got things like Google Glass, which you know made an attempt and kind of still making an attempt. I guess you can classify things like Hololens, maybe not because it's not something you'd wear out in every day. But Fitbit for sure. The Pebble Watch, remember the Pebble Watch, the E Ink Watch. I've got one in a drawer somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, definitely the Apple Watch. But here's the thing, I find that in mainstream consumer tech, aside from Apple, there's not much innovation going on. No, I'd agree. Is that a safe assessment? No, I think that's a very fair assessment. I don't think there's a huge amount going on at the moment, at least in the mainstream space, right? Uh, and this is what we're gonna talk about today because I feel that at the moment, I'm seeing more companies in the specialist category for blind people in my case, you know, who are actually coming up with better options than the mainstream companies are. Now, I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's that it's innovation. I don't know if it's fear, because I think when it comes to wearables, we saw Facebook and Ray-Ban work together on those Ray-Ban stories glasses. And that was a really interesting product. But I think, again, it's this thing about having a camera in your glasses. People might be nervous about it. People with children. I think there's a big question around privacy. And that's why I'm really intrigued to see what Apple come up with. But I have to say, in the last couple of months, especially over the course of this year, I've seen a real shift. At the beginning of this year, I would never have said to you, I think specialist technology is going to be driving forward wearables for blind people and possibly mainstream communities as well. But that seems to be where we're going. What do you what do you define as specialist technology when you say that word? Um, that's a great question because you know what is specialist versus mainstream, right? Especially in this space. So let's take Envision, for example, which is a company we've, we've been talking about here. Uh, we talk about it on the podcast a lot. And it's a fantastic company that have come up with basically using Google Glass, which is a mainstream product, and building a specialist application onto it. That means an application which can be used by blind people to, say, identify text, identify faces, colors, whatever it may, it may well be. So the application is specialist. The technology is mainstream. So I guess overall that makes it mainstream or makes it specialist, right? Because you could buy this, but you wouldn't get all the features of Google Glass that you got when you bought Google Glass way back when, right? So that's, I guess, where it gets interesting to see how things have developed in this, uh, this space. But I mean, that's just one example of how a specialist application 
has used mainstream tech. Do you feel that that the industry for building, whether it's you know braille displays or, or any kind of specialist tech, when it comes to the disability market, is more motivated because that's their niche and that's what they're going for, so they're just going to design for that audience? Yeah, it's different. I mean, I think Braille's always a bit of a world of its own, if I'm being honest, because Braille is a very specialist technology, and, and I don't think there's anything out there that will ever come up to... Uh, you know, technically, I don't think there's anything they can create unless they can build a tablet that can, you know, with either haptic feedback or something, actually be able to design a, a Braille-like experience in the way that you get with dots and pins and those mechanical, uh, you know, contraptions. But when it comes to this other technology, I think it can always be overtaken by mainstream companies. Apple could come out with a pair of glasses tomorrow that would absolutely throw Envision under the bus, that would throw OrCam under the bus. Some would say the technology is already there, right? I mean, OrCam, for example, is another example of technology which is kind of built for anybody, but at the heart of it, it's for people who are, as they call it, print disabled, or someone who is blind or low vision who wants to be able to read. Um, but this could all be superseded by an app. There's definitely a market for people to get what might be classed as simpler devices. Devices that are focused, maybe simpler is the wrong word, focused devices. Things that are actually focused on specific tasks. It might seem a little bit opposite to the way the trends have gone, which is one device and it does everything. But actually, I think these days that's, in, the, in, in our world, in, in blind world, it's actually easier if we can have a device that does a thing. And a good example of that is Humanware's Stellar Trek, which is a GPS device. And they've just launched that this year. Uh, you know, a totally different device that is focused solely on GPS. They've stripped out all of the other features that the previous version had, which it was able to listen to podcasts and, you know, all kinds of fancy stuff. You could do all that. You could listen to books, take notes. Can't do that with the Stellar Trek. It's just a GPS device. Yes, they've added OCR capability, but... It's it, Again, it's a mainstream device, or a specialist device, I should say, but focused on one task. And maybe that's the difference. Maybe we look at it as focused versus it can do it all, jack of all trades devices. Then you have companies like Apple, Stephen, who are out there and giving people the tool set they need to create different apps and different tools that could be considered specialist. But then look at the Apple Watch, for example. The Apple Watch has everything you need for it to be used for one specific purpose if you want it to be that way. But it's also for the mainstream. It's an interesting landscape when it comes to how the big guys are almost enabling the little guys. Yeah, that's a really interesting perspective on it, right? And actually, that's what I've seen the shift towards this year, not something I was expecting. I really wasn't. I was kind of expecting this year to see some kind of glasses project from Apple that was going to blow us all away. And actually what I've seen instead is Envision glasses blow me away. And the product we're going to talk about today coming into the market and just being totally different, trying something new, being different, being out there. I'm really intrigued to see what our guest today has to say about it. Well, let's uh, before we get to our guest, let's get to a friend of the show, of course. Uh, Mr. Sean Priest is on deck and waiting for us to talk all about the ARX Vision glasses. So do stick around. It is Double Tap TV. You're watching Double Tap TV. Get involved. Follow us at Double Tap On Air or email us feedback at doubletaponair.com. Double Tap TV will be right back. Thanks for tuning in to Double Tap here on YouTube. Hit that notification bell to get notified anytime we've got a brand new video. And don't forget to be subscribed. Hit that subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching.